Hi, ammonia enthusiasts. My name is Dr. Jacinta Backer and I work as a research fellow at Monash University on the sustainable electrochemical reduction of nitrogen gas to ammonia. I'm very pleased to speak to you a prospective article that I co-authored titled A Roadmap to the Ammonia Economy. The lead author is Professor Douglas McFarlane, along with his research team, all of whom are attending this Ammonia Energy Association virtual conference. In fact, Dr. Pavel Cherepanov and Dr. Brian Surianto are invited speakers and will detail some of that recent experimental progress. The roadmap article was published in the peer-reviewed journal, Dual in June 2020, and was the sixth most downloaded article for that month. We wrote this article to provide a bridge of information across all walks of ammonia life, that is from grassroots, small-scale scientists like ourselves, through to high-level industrial scale experts and technicians, as well as policymakers and anybody in between. For this reason, the language is free of jargon and intricate scientific detail and summarises global targets for ammonia production supported with references from reputable reports and peer-reviewed resources. Ultimately, this article is a written equivalent of visiting our labs for an hour or so and speaking with Doug as he discusses his vision for a sustainable ammonia-based future. We envisage the roadmap pathway as evolving via three overlapping generations, as shown here in Figure 5 from the article. The first generation includes current Harbour Bosch technology with carbon capture and sequestration. Generation 2 also relies on the Harbour Bosch technology, but uses renewable hydrogen gas generated by water electrolyzers and renewable energy rather than fossil fuels. Generation 3 technology breaks with this reliance on the Harbour Bosch process and introduces sustainable electrochemical production of ammonia using renewable energy, nitrogen gas and water. Generation 3 is the main focus for a section of the paper that discusses items such as alternative electrochemical pathways, mechanisms and challenges. Energy efficiency and capital costs are theoretically calculated to be competitive with that of Generation 1 and Generation 2 technologies, assuming specific research targets can be met. From an ammonia demand point of view, we discuss end use modalities and show a graphic representation of our vision for the ammonia economy. On the left, we show how the ammonia is generated sustainably, and on the right show how it is stored and transported to a wide variety of practical applications, where it is used directly as a fuel or converted into electricity. We find that this figure is a great tool for outreach activities and creating broad public awareness of ammonia as a fuel. Current demand for ammonia is mostly generated by fertilizers and agricultural use. Once applications in transport, particularly shipping, and electricity generation take off, this demand will increase by orders of magnitude. This brings me to the final picture I will show in this video, figure four, the nitrogen cycle. Our roadmap highlights that anthropogenically fixed nitrogen is already double the amount of naturally fixed nitrogen, and it is not fully understood how the earth is processing this. Substantially increasing ammonia production even in the closed cycle economy proposed, calls for proceeding with caution and going to all lengths to prevent even small leaks of fixed nitrogen. As the ammonia community, we need to always strive for continuous improvement and research towards environmental protection and stand against greenwashing. We certainly don't want to replace a global carbon crisis with a global nitrogen crisis. Our roadmap article is open access, so anyone can download it for free. Search for a roadmap to the ammonia economy and click on the science direct option. Following this, be sure to click on the DOI link as pictured here. Thank you for your time.